Okay. All right, hello museum families and welcome to Royal BC Museum Kids, a play date um, through street screens across British Columbia and the world. The previous sessions are recorded and you can find them on our Royal BC Museum YouTube page. So my name is Chris O'Connor and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. The museum, my home, is on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations, here in Victoria on Vancouver Island. Our guest is named Victoria as well, so that I got like <laughs> thrown off there for a second. So this upcoming Monday is International Museum Day. Um, so though we can't go explore within museums on that day, we can reflect a little on what museums mean for, to us. For me, museums are about wonder and curiosity. Museums are about surprise. Museums are a place where people can be heard, feelings can be felt, and where we can together better understand about the world that we live in and who we are as people. And that's exciting. And sometimes in museums, we need to look way back in time, like 65 million years and further back to better understand our world now. And that's what we're gonna be exploring today. But first I wanted to come back to our session from last week. Um, we made phonology wheels with Jana Steffen. Um, and if you weren't with us last week, uh, phonology wheels are a way to sort of chronicle visually uh, the changes in nature. So I just wanted to share, so I'm gonna share my screen. <laughs> that's my screen. <laughs> Trying to move this little button here. Um, so, oh, okay, so yes, yeah, so this is us. This is uh, our program, RBCM at Home Kids. I had a poll question. So the four options are Triceratops, Tyrannosaurus, Stegosaurus, Spinosaurus, and these are all illustrations from the Natural History Museum. The winner with 39% of the vote is Tyr Tyrannosaurus. And next up, shortly below, behind that is Triceratops, then Spinosaurus, then Stegosaurus. But they all had lots of, they all had lots of uh, choices. So thanks for sharing your, your favorite dinosaur with us. Last week we did these phonology wheels and this is one um, submitted by Hartley, uh, who's one of our regular museum kids uh, here in this program. Um, so, Partly started on May 6th when we had our that first session, and then four days later shared with what what they had uh, what they've done what they had done. So I love this idea of eight days in May and and the the process so far. So we're going to be making some um, dinosaur footprints today. I'd love for you to share what you've made with us. Um, not the actual thing. You don't need to put it in the mail and send it to me, but you could take a picture and send it to me um, either by through my uh, email address, so cocconnor at royalbcmuseum.bc.ca or through our social media channels at Royal BC Museum or hashtag RBCM Kids. Continue exploring after these sessions through our learning portal. Um, it's an online learning um, space for lots of great information. Um, so you could Google Royal BC Museum and Learning Portal, or that's the site there. And as I mentioned, next week, our session is going to be with uh, my friend who's a, a colleague, a museum education colleague from Toronto. You would usually, if it wasn't um, shut down, you would usually see him at the Royal Ontario Museum and he runs the summer camps there, Kieran Mukherjee. Um, and actually Victoria knows Kieran as well. Mm -hmm. So next week we're going to make paper towel butterfly art. And these are some of the materials you'll need, but I'll also have that up on our website uh, next week as well. So, um, so we're looking forward to that next week. All right, so I'm going to come back to um, our Zoom page. So just a, um, just a reminder, so this is um, the way this format works, it's a webinar. So you could see us, my, I'm the host, Chris, and our special guest each week, that's Victoria today. So we can't see we, you, we could hear from you if you use the Q&A box or the chat section as well, or on Facebook Live, you could use uh, the comment section. 
and our colleague Wes is there looking at the comments. And our, my coll our colleague Liz is looking at the chat uh, box and the Q&A for today. Um, so as we're, re we're recording this session, so if you need to take a break or you need more time, you could just play it again later. Um, the most important thing is to be good to yourself and to others during this time. Do things at your own pace. Um, so I say that every week, but I mean it every week. It's like, be kind to yourself. So um, let's meet our special guest today. So she's our first returning guest, backed by popular demand. Um, today's special guest is Dr. Victoria Arbor, Curator of Paleontology here at the Royal BC Museum. Victoria was with us for the very first Royal BC Museum at Home Kids, where we learned to draw Ferrosaurus sustenensis. Um, a newly discovered dinosaur in BC. Today we'll ex be exploring dinosaur tracks and the stories that we tell. And it's true, um, Victoria, you uh, people were very uh, excited and thrilled by being able to spend the first session with you. So um, we're so glad to have you back. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. So um, what are we gonna be exploring today? All right, well, today we are going to think about dinosaur footprints. So um, I'm going to show a couple of pictures of dinosaur footprints from BC in a moment. So if you need a moment to get some of your supplies together, um, you can take that opportunity. So what I want to do today is talk a little bit about dinosaur footprints, what they are and how they form. Um, what we can learn about dinosaurs from their footprints. So learning like different dinosaur footprint shapes and learning a little bit about some of the cool behaviors that we can interpret from dinosaur footprints that we wouldn't be able to know just from dinosaur bones themselves. Um, the reason I wanted to do dinosaur footprints today is because British Columbia is actually one of the very best places in Canada and in the world uh, to go and find dinosaur footprints. We have tons of dinosaur footprint sites, um, especially up in the northeastern part of the province, up in places around Tumblr Ridge and Hudson's Hope and Chetwind and, and sort of all throughout that region. Um, dinosaur footprints preserve in a different way than dinosaur bones. So you don't always get them in the same place. So they kind of tell you different things. Um, and sometimes it actually tells us about dinosaurs that um, aren't preserved uh, by bones in the province. So we've got some examples of that uh, in BC as well. So what you're gonna need for today is some Play-Doh, or if you're like me and you didn't have Play-Doh at home, you can make your own salt dough, which is basically just flour and salt and water, and then it makes something that's kind of like cookie dough, but I would not recommend eating it because it's mostly salt and will taste really gross. So don't do that. Um, and you're gonna need a couple of dinosaur toys. So if you only have one, that's okay. If you have other dinosaurs or other plastic animals, um, don't use stuffed animals. I don't think that'll work very well. Um, but any animal is good. If you have dinosaurs, that's great. Um, this is really meant to be a uh, kind of inspiration for you. So we're not making one single thing and I hope that you can use the ideas I'm showing to be creative. And we're gonna basically make some cool little, like little dinosaur cookies almost with dinosaur footprints. And I'll give you some ideas for like what you can do with them and how you can decorate them. Um, I've also got like a pencil and a fork for doing some things later, but if you don't have those at hand, that's okay. Um, what you really need is some, some sort of squishy substance and some sort of plastic animal, hopefully a dinosaur. Uh, and if you've got more than one dinosaur, that's great. So I'm going to show my screen for a few minutes just to show you some really cool examples of dinosaur footprints from British Columbia that I've had a chance to go see in different places to give you a bit of an idea of the different kinds of footprint shapes that we might see from dinosaurs. So I'm going to share my screen. So just bear with me for a second while I get this set up. Let's go to application window and PowerPoint and let's share it. All right, so I've got my couple of slides up now so that you guys can see. So this is my goofy heads uh, next to a dinosaur footprint. Uh, these footprints are from a place called um, the Six Peaks Dinosaur Track Site, which is kind of up near Hudson's Hope. It's very remote, so it's kind of hard to get to, but it's a really cool spot with lots of different dinosaur footprints that are all, I think, about 110, 120 million years old. So they're a lot older than the dinosaur bones that you find in places like Alberta, for example. 
So lots of dinosaurs walked on their hind legs and they just had three toes that touched the ground. So lots of them make these kind of three toed footprints. This is a really common dinosaur footprint shape. And honestly, it looks a lot kind of like a bird footprint that you would see um, if you were looking at like crow footprints or even duck footprints to a certain extent. Um, so you can see like modern day dinosaur footprints all around you because birds are living dinosaurs and their feet look kind of like dinosaur feet. So some of them have these really skinny toes, but still three toes. And some of them have three toes, but kind of fatter toes. Um, so they had sort of fleshier pads and, and not as sharp claws um, on the tips of their toes. Uh, and so this is another type of three-toed dinosaur footprint. Paleontologists will sometimes call these tridactyl. That just means three toes, so tridactyl footprints. That's kind of a fun word. And at the Six Peaks Dinosaur Track site, we don't just get individual footprints, but they actually are in sequence like the dinosaur was walking. So these are walking footprints. We call this a trackway. So a single footprint is a track and a bunch of footprints is a trackway. So you can see them walking off into the distance. This isn't a really big dinosaur footprint because that's my hand next to it. So it's, it's not huge, but it's still a pretty big dinosaur. But the next one is a really big dinosaur. So this is my foot. Here's my foot right here. And this weird rectangle with these kind of sharp points up here, that is the foot of a sauropod dinosaur or a long-necked dinosaur. So long-necked dinosaurs, they have these big sort of almost elephant-like hind feet, not their front feet. Their front feet are kind of skinny and weird looking actually, but their back feet have this big pad. They've got claws at the front and they leave these really big footprints. And this is my friend David Evans. He's a curator at the Royal Ontario Museum and that footprint is big enough for him to sit in basically. Um, so that's a fun thing that we like to do sometimes when we find sore blood footprints because they're just so big. Um, so this is a really cool footprint because we don't have any bones of sauropod dinosaurs in Canada that we know of yet. But so we basically only know that they lived here because we find their footprints. So this is a really good example of how footprints can give us really interesting fossil information that we wouldn't get if we only looked at bones, even though bones are super cool. I love looking at bones, but footprints are really neat. And then I thought I would show some weird footprints of my favorite group of dinosaurs, the ankylosaurs. So ankylosaurs are the armored dinosaurs. Some of them have tail clubs. Most of them are really spiky and they have these bones in their skin and they have very weird footprints. So what we're looking at here next to this person's hand, this is actually the hand print. So it's kind of like a, a crescent shape, like a croissant or like a moon, for example. And then their little toes kind of stick off around the edge. That's actually a pretty common handprint shape for a lot of dinosaurs. They don't have paws or elephant or rhino feet. They kind of walk up on their fingers and leave these really weird handprints. Um, and then the picture to the right here, we've got a footprint in the back. So this kind of round one, it's a little bit blobby, so it's a little hard to make out, but it's got a couple of toes here. They have four toes on their back feet. And then that sort of crescent shaped handprint. And these have been filled in by rainwater, which is kind of fun. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. That gives you a couple of ideas about how we can identify um, different dinosaur footprints and the dinosaurs that, uh, that um, leave different footprints and how we can identify what kind of dinosaurs were there just from their footprints. So the Victoria, thing that's cool is we can get, and yeah. Sorry, just jumping in for a second. So we had a question, yeah. uh, how do you oh, know, yeah, sure. if, yeah, how do you know if it's a hand or a toe? Like how do, you oh, how do we know it's a hand or a toe? So for some dinosaurs, you can tell the difference because they have different shapes. So the hind feet usually leave a bigger print, like a bigger smush in the ground. And I'll show you with some dinosaurs, actually. Um, whoops, I'm knocking them over. I got my, this is like my tickle trunk of dinosaur toys. So I've got this spiky backpack full of dinosaur toys. So I'm going to pull some out of that as we go. Um, but a good example is actually this ankylosaur. So I'm going to put him up next. So this is a pretty good ankylosaur. So on this guy, you can see he's got pretty big feet at the back, nice big fleshy feet, but then the hands are really small and are going to leave that kind of funny crescent shape. And we'll sort of show that with some of these pictures. A lot of dinosaur toys actually get this wrong. So a lot of them will probably have big elephant feet at the front, but that's okay. Um, it's, a, it's a thing that not many people know about, but that's why it's fun to have actual footprints to look at. So let's make a couple of dinosaur footprints just so we can see the different shapes that they leave. So I'm gonna make a couple of three-toed footprints. 
And I'm gonna make a couple of footprints from four-legged dinosaurs, quadruped footprints, uh, maybe a sauropod. So I'm gonna basically pinch off some pieces of Play-Doh, um, maybe about that big. I'm using my salt dough, of course, so I'm not gonna eat it, uh, even though it looks a lot like cookie dough. And I'm just gonna roll it up and basically smush it into a little circle in my palm. If you have a rolling pin, you can use a rolling pin to make them really nice and and uh, smooth, but you know, just using it with your hand is okay because you might want to reuse this later. So let's make a three-toed dinosaur footprint. So I've got this Cryolophosaurus. This is a dinosaur from Antarctica. And I'm gonna make a three-toed footprint. I'm gonna make two three-toed footprints just by pressing it into the Play-Doh. Um, and I'm gonna show you up here, three-toed footprints. So this is basically how dinosaur footprint fossils are formed. A dinosaur walks along in some kind of soft, squishy sediment, like mud or a really soft sand, and their body weight presses the feet into the ground. And then if that actually dries out for a few days and then gets covered by a new layer of mud or sand, um, those footprints get preserved in the fossil record, sometimes for hundreds of millions of years, which is pretty neat. Um, so there's a three-toed dinosaur footprint, a couple of three-toed footprints from a theropod or meat-eating dinosaur. I'm gonna make a second one. I can't wait to see what you guys make too. I'm curious what kind of dinosaur toys everyone has that they can show off their different dinosaur footprints. Um, so let's make a three-toed footprint from, let's use this dome-headed dinosaur, a pachycephalosaur. This is a plant eater. Um, they also probably made three-toed footprints but they're a lot smaller than a big theropod like Cryolophosaurus. So there's another three-toed footprint. So you can see how if we were looking at footprints in the fossil record, um, these are two pretty different dinosaurs, a dome head dinosaur and a meat-eating dinosaur, but they leave pretty similar footprints. So it becomes really tricky to tell some dinosaurs apart just from their footprints. We have to look at things like size, and how splayed apart the toes are. Um, another good example is uh, if we use like a duck-billed dinosaur, I'm gonna use my Parasaurolophus here, that's a nice classic dinosaur. That also leaves a three-toed footprint, but they have sort of blunter claws and bigger toes than a meat eater. But they also Sorry, are gonna just leave kind of similar three-toed footprints. Yeah, question. Just yeah. jumping in for a second. Um, yeah. Is it okay if, if is it can people start to to do that in their own clay now oh this yes, is just a question please do yeah, yeah absolutely yes thank you for reminding me yes i hope that you are making some things at the same time yeah. um and if you want to experiment just go right ahead you don't have to make exactly what i'm making this is just yeah. to give you ideas and you're kind of answering it but one of the questions was about if if it's all three toes and how how do you know the difference that sometimes the difference could probably be pretty subtle right so how yeah. can as a, if you're out in the field and you're seeing that, how, how do you make, um, how are you clear what is what? <laughs> yeah, so to be honest, sometimes it's really hard and there are paleontologists who really specialize in interpreting dinosaur footprints. Um, there's different things that we can look at. We can look at, um, is there a really sharp claw? Are the toes like really close together? Are they splayed apart really far? Um, what does the back of the heel look like, the sort of pad on the foot? Uh, and sometimes it's really hard to tell and we're not sure. Another thing that makes it really complicated is how squishy your mud is. So this Play-Doh is pretty firm, so we get a pretty nice footprint when we do it. But if this dinosaur was walking in like really gloppy, goopy mud, it leaves a much messier footprint and it gets harder to tell exactly what you're looking at. Um, let's see, what should I make next? I'm gonna make an ankylosaur set of footprints next. So I'm gonna make a, a hind print and a, a, a footprint and a hand print using my trusty ankylosaurus model here. So I'm gonna squish a hind foot in and then one of those front feet and then we'll get a chance to see how different they look. So let me hold it up here. So we've got the hind footprint here. So it's nice and big and round. And then this front footprint is kind of funny because it has more toes and it's kind of skinnier than the other one. So that's kind of fun. So you can try making a handprint and a footprint if you've got a, a four-legged dinosaur instead of a two-legged dinosaur. Two-legged dinosaurs probably won't leave handprints most of the time because they're going to keep them off the ground while they're walking around. Um, what's another good one? I'm going to make 
a sauropod footprint because I have one sauropod toy. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those really big sauropod toys. I've got a little one, so it won't be quite as cool. Maybe you have like a big Brachiosaurus or an Apatosaurus. I have this little Shunosaurus, a little mini model, but he's got these nice big elephant feet in the back with a big claw. And so these are pretty cool. I made him squish those footprints in really deep because sauropods are really heavy. So he's got those two back feet and then they've got some claws at the tip, which is pretty cool. So a little bit different from elephant feet. So we're getting some pretty cool footprints here, hopefully. I thought I would just give you an idea for what you can do with these. If you really like your footprints and you wanna keep them later, you can take a pencil and you can poke a little hole through your footprint disc just like that and if you let that hole dry um, you can turn it into an ornament later for your Christmas tree. So I've got a couple examples like that. Um, actually this is a good one that's that I and I actually let this dry and then I, I colored them in so you could see them a bit better and then I put some string on it. So if you guys want to make some really cool Christmas ornaments or your dinosaur footprints I think that's a pretty fun thing to do with them. So hopefully this is giving you an idea of like different dinosaur footprint shapes. Let's see, maybe I'll do one more. I've got a Stegosaurus toy, which is pretty fun. I can see Liz saying, I would love to see your Christmas tree, Victoria. Oh, I have a lot of dinosaurs on my Christmas tree, but I've never made dinosaur footprint ornaments. So maybe I'll have to do that for this year. Um, all right. So I'm, I'm envisioning, Victoria, your Christmas tree in the shape of a dinosaur. Is that, oh, that, is that not true? That would be fun. No, sadly not, but maybe we'll have to try that for this maybe, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus is kind of like a sauropod. They usually have big sort of chunky back feet um, and then a little bit skinnier front feet like an ankylosaur. So there's my, my Stegosaurus footprints. So yeah, so you know, when you're done with this, you can color them in, you can use different colors. I used markers on mine, you could use paint, um, and you can do all kinds of things. So one of the things that's kind of fun that you can also do, this isn't footprints, but it's kind of the same idea as footprints, is you can also try making impressions of your dinosaur toy's skin. So I really like doing that with ankylosaurs because they've got this super cool spiky back, but if you've got any dinosaur toy that has cool skin, you can just try pressing your Play-Doh onto the skin. And sometimes we do find skin impressions in the fossil record from dinosaurs. That helps us know that they are scaly. Um, I think this one turns out really well. So there's the skin impression. So you can see the armor and some of the skin blobs. And this is basically how a skin impression forms if a dinosaur dies in soft mud um, or in a really fine sand and then that sand dries and hardens around it, you can get skin impressions preserved, which is pretty cool. We always get excited when we see skin impressions because that's what the dinosaur looked like. Um, oh, I have one other really fun thing that I'm gonna show you before I show you a couple of ideas for getting extra creative with your dinosaur footprints. Um, I have an example of a dinosaur footprint. This is a little metal cast of a dinosaur footprint from Nova Scotia, and that's the actual life size. Um, so I grew up in Nova Scotia, and Nova Scotia has some really cool dinosaur footprints. So this is the life size, little tiny dinosaur footprint. And I noticed the other day that if of I use what, my- What kind of dinosaur? Well, that's the question. It's a three-toed mm. dinosaur. It's probably from a small meat eater. And if I use this T-Rex toy, it's not a life-size T-Rex, but if we use that T-Rex toy, it makes a footprint about the same size as this real footprint from Nova Scotia, maybe a little bit bigger. So that tells us that the dinosaur that made that little footprint is probably only about as big as this T-Rex toy. That's a pretty small little dinosaur. And those are actually the smallest dinosaur footprints in the whole world in Nova Scotia, um, which I think is pretty cool. So BC has lots of really good dinosaur footprints, but Nova Scotia has some really cool ones too. Um, so I'm going to let you guys catch up and maybe ask, uh, think of some questions to ask me. Um, and I'm going to share my screen in a moment, unless there's any burning questions right now. I just, um, we, we asked them, we asked all the families what was their favorite uh, dinosaur, but we didn't hear from you, Victoria. What is your, that was one okay. of the questions. So what is your favorite? Well, 
my favorite dinosaurs, I didn't put it on the list because I didn't want to bias the poll, but my <laughs> favorite dinosaurs are the ankylosaurs. Um, it's really hard for me to pick one. I really like ankylosaurus because that's like a classic dinosaur. Um, I've gotten to name a couple of ankylosaurs, so I really like those ones. I named one called Zool and one named Zia Pelta. Um, but I basically like all, I like all dinosaurs, but I really like the armored dinosaurs. I think they're okay. super fun. Um, right. I have, there's other questions, but I will wait until oh, after. Oh, we okay. can wait until after. Okay, perfect. So the next part is now we're going to do like fancy footprints. So this is going to give you some ideas for not just making like a single footprint, but what can we do if we made like a whole bunch of footprints in our Play-Doh and then you can play and experiment. So I'm going to share my screen again, just to give you some ideas. Go to my application window, PowerPoint, share, there we go. Make this thing again. So we left off at sort of learning about how to identify footprints from different shapes and the different dinosaurs that they might that might have made them. So now we're going to get fancy. So one of the things you can do if you let your dinosaur footprints that you've made um, dry out all the way, you can either let them dry in the air or you can put them in the oven at like a really low heat. Um, but letting them dry in the air for a day or two works really well. That's what I did. Um, if you let them dry out all the way and then you take some fresh Play-Doh and press it into your dry footprint, you will get a cast of your footprint. And so that's what we sometimes find when we're out in the field. Sometimes we find the actual footprint impression. And sometimes what we find is mud that filled in that footprint later on and then popped out and made like a 3D footprint. So that's what we're looking at here, a big three-toed footprint, probably from a duck-billed dinosaur, because it's really big and it doesn't have sharp claws. And that's my foot next to it. So that's a pretty big dinosaur. That's a big dinosaur footprint. But instead of being the impression, this is the stuff that filled in the impression. So you can give that a try later on. Um, you, we can also, we're gonna try making some trackway surfaces with lots of dinosaur footprints on them. So sometimes you find big surfaces with lots of different dinosaurs on them and the footprints like change direction or they cross over each other. So one dinosaur stepped somewhere and then another one stepped over that footprint later on. Um, so you can have a lot of fun if you roll out a big piece of Play-Doh, you can like have your dinosaur stomp all over it. We're gonna do that. We can also learn a little bit about the environment that the dinosaurs were walking in. So things like water will shape the environment. We can see things like ripple marks from the beach. Um, the water moving over the, over the sand leaves ripples and those actually fossilize. And sometimes dinosaur footprints are on ripple marks, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Sometimes that mud dries out and makes cracks. Those are called mud cracks. And so we find dinosaur footprints on mud crack surfaces a lot. So we're gonna try making some mud cracks of our own. And then I wanted to show you three really neat examples of dinosaur behaviors that we can learn from the fossil record. So this is a really cool place in Spain that my friend Angelica Teresa's took me to. She lives in Spain and, and looks after some footprint sites. And these are like long claw marks, these sort of highlighted in white here from a swimming three-toed dinosaur, probably a big meat eater. So that's a dinosaur that was sort of dog paddling through the water and is just the tip of his toes were scratching the mud and leaving these long claw traces. So we wouldn't know that dinosaurs could swim like that unless we had these footprints, which is really neat. There's also some really cool examples of dinosaurs sitting. So basically dinosaur bum prints. Um, and that gives us an idea of how dinosaurs would sit. We can see like where the hind feet would go and where the little front feet sat and some of the tail and the little bum prints. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of neat to have a dinosaur sitting bum print. And then this one is really neat. I think we should try making these together. Um, these very funny scratches in the ground were made by dinosaurs with three toes probably a big meat eater, basically scratching at the ground in these little, making these little holes. So they weren't digging nests. This is actually what you would see if they were scratching to show off to each other. So this is something that some birds do today uh, for courtship displays, basically when they're trying to show off to a mate or compete with another uh, competing mate. Um, they will make these scratches in the ground and we would have no idea that dinosaurs did this except for that we find their footprints in the fossil record. So those are some ideas. Maybe you could make some little dinosaur scratching pits. 
with your with your dinosaur footprints. So I'm going to come back over and maybe we'll try making a couple of those different ideas um, with our with our dinosaur toys that we have. So I'm going to take a pretty big chunk of Play-Doh, bigger than the ones that I was making before, um, that we can make a nice long surface on. So I'm going to just kind of roll it up and swish it out flat. I'm going to swish it onto my surface here. Let's see if you guys can see that. Yeah, I think you can see that. Mostly okay. So you can just squish it out. If you have a rolling pin, this is that makes this part a little easier, but you can just have a nice big blob. Uh, if you have a pencil, we can maybe make some little ripple marks on it, like a beach. So that's kind of fun. And who should we have walk across this? I think I'm gonna make one of my three-toed meat eaters walk across. So we can step through there. Make little footprints and I'll show you this when I finish it. And let's see, then maybe, um, maybe we have a horned dinosaur come and walk through. This is Pachyrhinosaurus, it walks on four legs. And maybe it comes later on and walks across in a different direction and steps on some of the footprints that that theropod made. So if we were looking at this as a fossil, we'd be able to see, let's see if I can pull this up without ruining it. Ooh, it's hard. Okay, let's see. There we go. I almost got it. All right. So if we were looking at this in the fossil record, we would see those three-toed dinosaur footprints going by, and then we would see these other footprints coming across, and we'd be able to know that one of those dinosaurs walked there later or earlier. And we'd also be able to see those ripple marks, see those ripple marks going through that way. And we would know that those dinosaurs were walking along uh, maybe like a beach or a riverbank, which is pretty fun. So I think that's pretty fun. You can, you can make all kinds of experiments. You could have a couple of dinosaurs walking side by side next to each other. You could have some dinosaurs uh, turning. Uh, maybe they see a meat eater coming and they turn away. Let's make, um, let's make some dinosaur scratching spots where they scratched the ground. And Victoria, we have a, just a couple more minutes uh, for the official session, so. Okay. Um, that maybe the, the last, last questions? thing. Well, we'll, yeah, we'll do that once we get one. to the, the, um, do you want, do you want to finish and then, and then I'll ask you some, some yeah, of the that questions. We good. have a whole lot All of right, questions. Make, okay. Oh, that's great. Okay. Well, let's make some dinosaur scratches, um, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to use my big outdated Spinosaurus because there was just a new paper about Spinosaurus that tells us it looks totally different than this, but I still like him anyway. I've had this one since I was a kid. So let's make him and his three-toed feet. He can sort of scratch like he's showing off to another dinosaur. And maybe this will be the competing guy, scratching the ground. And those are little dinosaur scratching spots, just like what we see in the fossil record but that we wouldn't know about just from the bones themselves. So I hope that gives you guys some different ideas for how to play. Um, this has been fun for me because this is basically just like playing with toys and Play-Doh. So this is like being a kid again. I really like this. Um, there's so many different creative things you can do. So I really encourage you to just play around with your toys and think about how a paleontologist might interpret different behaviors or how you might ask questions of different things. Maybe you can try doing like different skin impressions from different dinosaurs. Um, like I said, if you want to make little ornaments, you can even get really fancy. Um, if you want really nice even ones, you could like use a rolling pin and roll it out and then use a cookie cutter. I don't have a circular cookie cutter, but I have this like, um, I have like a little like flower and you can try that. Or I realized I have some dinosaur cookie cutters, so it might be fun to like cut some dinosaurs out and then put dinosaur footprints on them. So I hope that you'll play around. Maybe you'll color them later on. And um, yeah, thanks for joining us with uh, these cool dinosaur footprints. I hope you'll ask some questions now. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Victoria, for, for joining us again on, on this, um, yeah, this is on cool. RBCM at Home Kids. <laughs> uh, so uh, we try to keep it to a half an hour for the actual session. So I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to officially end the session now, but we'll stay, we'll stay on. Um, so I'm going to end the recording now. Um, but okay. thank you so much, Victoria.